So in this particular class, a very, very, very important topic that we are going to talk is about transportation of substances through plasma membrane inside and outside of the cell. It is always movement of molecules from the higher concentration to lower concentration, right? The concentration of perfume is more where it is more in the bottle and as soon as you open it, it just diffuses in the air. Right, osmosis is actually possible in three conditions. What are those? High concentration to low concentration, but via a semi-permeable membrane. Hypertonic means inside there is more water than outside. Outside the salt concentration is more. So hippopotamus is how? Swelled up. Isn't it? Now let's move on towards the bulk transport. Very interesting, guys. Hello guys, welcome once again. This is Devika, your biology buddy, your biology teacher at Infinity Learn. Right? So let's start our preparation towards NEET by this classes. I'm not just focusing on your CBSC examination, but this classes are especially designed for your foundation to be strong. Yes, my dear students, these are the foundation classes. Until now, we are talking about the cell chapter the fundamental unit of life we have understood the fluid mosaic model we have understood the morphology of cells we have also understood the history of cell biology right so in this particular class a very 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 important topic that we are going to talk is about transportation of substances through plasma membrane inside and outside of the cell Right? So how is transportation happening and how do, you know, substances come uh, in or substances go out of the cell? So this is something that we are going to understand. And not only that, by the end of the session, you would be able to solve a neat PYQ. That's my guarantee. Let's see. Now, here, transportation in cell happens how? Transportation of cell via the plasma membrane, okay, via the plasma membrane occurs through what? It is basically, you know what is a plasma membrane? Plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer, right? Uh, and this phospholipid bilayer is also decorated with lot of proteins, uh, chlorostrol, right? All uh, glycolipids, glycoproteins, etc. Right? So this actually uh, is a semi-permeable membrane. That means it is not going to allow everything and anything inside. It is going to be very selective in things that can come in and things that can go out. Right? So it is kind of protecting all the uh, protoplasm inside the cell, right? The cytoplasm, nucleus and the other organelles. Now, three types of transport is possible via plasma membrane. First one, the passive transport. Second one, the active transport and third one is your bulk transport so dear students here what is passive what is active and what is bulk okay bulk transport is actually it could make sense from the name itself if things are being you know uh transported in large amount bulk transport same literal meaning what is passive and what is active so simple passive active will not require any energy molecule no atp do we need atp over here what is atp adenosine triphosphate our energy currency is required no energy is not required in this kind of transport then what is active transport requires atp atp is utilized here you have to buy ticket how will you buy ticket by giving currency what is the currency in the cell? ATP, right? So here it is active and trick to remember passive. It's a bus pass, right? Pass, you don't give money, right? You just show the pass and you are allowed to enter or uh, imagine you going to a club or uh, a study club where you have a student pass, right? So passive transport, no ATP, no currency required. Freely you can enter and go out as well. Now, the transportation here in case of passive transport where energy is not required is of two types. 
diffusion and osmosis depend on uh, what kind of molecules are being passed okay or are being transported so in case of diffusion it is always movement of molecules from the higher concentration to lower concentration right there is no energy involved nothing simple right it is mostly we will see it is mostly regarding the gases and all in biology osmosis is done for transportation of water we'll understand in detail more now right so diffusion is for what diffusion is simple process in which movement of molecules takes place from higher concentration to lower concentration that's all just like when you open a perfume bottle right the concentration of perfume is more where it is more in the bottle and as soon as you open it it just diffuses in the air right so air has lesser concentration of those perfume molecules so perfume start moving around where there is low concentration from higher concentration of that bottle to the lower concentration exactly same is the diffusion in the cell no energy no membrane nothing is mind minded over here it's all free right so just concentration according to the concentration gradient unless and until both the side becomes a equal uh, in concentration this is done to uh, attain homeostasis homeostasis is a condition where cell will usually tend to go uh, so that we have you know balanced uh, molecule concentration on both the side inside of the cell and outside of the cell now we'll understand ki what is the significance of diffusion in the biological system right so diffusion uh, actually helps in uniform distribution what uniform distribution of the gases right it helps in uniform distribution of the gases or other substances in the cytoplasm completely then it assist in exchange of gases uh you know where it is required for critical processes like in case of respiration uh carbon dioxide going out and oxygen coming in in case of photosynthesis the ulta of it the opposite of it right so respiration and photosynthesis etc even the i gave you the example of perfume water right same is the case with flowers isn't it the uh, the smell the aroma of the flower right it helps in attracting insects by spreading so that is also diffusion process uh it also very important guys in our system it helps in the diffusion helps in the uh you know distribution and absorption of nutrients and other substances uh from the intestine into the blood so exchange of digested food material from the intestine to the blood occurs through diffusion process itself right now let's move on to the next uh, type of passive transport which is osmosis right osmosis is actually possible in three conditions what are those hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic okay hypo iso and hyper one more trick for you people over here always remember hypo hypo is less okay hypoglycemia less glucose in blood right on the opposite on the contrary hyper hyper bp uh, hypoglycemic condition we say diabetes lots and lots so more okay you just remember this and tonic in this particular uh, situation in this particular osmosis process in biology for your better understanding always uh, relate tonic with salts or uh, sugar which you are going to dissolve in the solution right so now what is osmosis then osmosis in biology is a process wherein the water molecules moves from higher concentration towards the lower concentration then what's the difference between diffusion and osmosis here one big keyword via semi permeable membrane movement is same high concentration to low concentration but via a semi permeable membrane right that is a keyword over here my dear students so semi permeable membrane then that is called as osmosis right 
सो नाउ लेट्स सी द थ्री कंडीशंस हाइपोटोनिक सॉल्यूशन हाउ विल यू नो ऑस्मोसिस हैपन नाउ नाउ यू नो आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी हाइपो लेस टॉनिक लेस सॉल्ट्स राइट सो हियर व्हाट वी हैव डन that diagram is uh, very effective for your visual memories okay so take a screenshot of it and keep it with you it's very important for you now hypotonic because this questions usually come in your sans olympiad uh, and neat exams as well okay so when the surrounding medium is hypotonic right so hypotonic hypo less tonic i told you already solute solute can be anything salt or sugar right when it is kept in a hypotonic uh, solution that means the salt concentration outside is lesser than uh, the inside inside salt is more if salt is more inside then what is going to happen that means water is less and how will water move from higher concentration to lower concentration isn't it now how will it happen outside solution is very very diluted there is lots and lots of water molecule more dilution means what does more dilution means more diluted means more water molecules wo more 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 water molecules right bahut zyada pani hai bahar if water is higher on the outer you just have to understand this much beta ki where water molecule is more out or in wherever it is more it will move towards the lesser concentration that's it right and that's the trick to remember now more water will enter into the cell and because of which what can happen more and more water if it is coming inside to wo kaise hoga bhigoye hue kismis ki jaisi uski paristhiti ho jayegi full jayega right so it would be like the resin in water you have soaked how the resin what happens with the resin it swells up right similar thing is going to happen because water is going to enter inside right please understand this water is going to enter inside and inside and inside and if you do not remove it cells can burst open as well right cell will swell up when it is hypotonic solution right in the end i'll give you a trick also i know there is a lot of confusion today when you are seeing this video you'll find oh i will remember this but next time when you uh, are asked the question it will skip your mind okay so now uh, the isotonic solution iso is equal to right so outside and inside the concentration is same if the concentration is same there is already equilibrium and if the equilibrium is there is there any need of movement no movement will happen so in isotonic the cell will remain of the same size as there is no movement across the plasma membrane now hypertonic will be opposite to hypotonic solution hypertonic means inside there is more water than outside outside the salt concentration is more so what will happen from inside the water will start moving out and because of which what would happen shrinkage will happen right what would happen shrinkage will happen and when shrinkage is happening there is one more word that you have to remember that is uh, in this condition it is exosmosis what is happening exosmosis is happening over here right exosmosis that means if this is a cell okay if this is a cell i'm drawing a plant cell okay if this is a cell now because water has moved out what would happen the plasma membrane will shrink the cell is going to shrink and this is called as plasmolysis what it is called as plasmo lysis right plasmolysis shrinkage is going to happen on the contrary in case of hypotonic solution here it was endosmosis endosmosis and endosmosis like in case of exosmosis we call it as plasmolysis as well here we call it as im bibition right we call it as imbibition remember this imbibition endosmosis right water is entering inside 
exosmosis. Water is moving outside. So plasmolysis. Right? Now, what is the significance of osmosis in biology? So the root will absorb water, you remember? And that is happening. The absorption of water via the root from the soil is via the process of osmosis itself. Right? It also helps, it also helps the opening and closing of stomata. If you remember, they have the guard cells, right? The kidney bean shaped cells of uh, the plant and uh, dermis, right? And exodermis. And this, if it is swells, the stomata opens. If it shrinks, the stomata closes. So that is also via osmosis. Water movement regulates it, right? So it also assists cell to cell movement of water. If water is moving from one cell to another, it is via osmosis. Right? So this is the condition that happens. One more time, guys. Hypotonic solution, water will move inside. Hypertonic solution, water will move outside. Now, how to remember, I promised you a trick. Simple trick, guys. Hypo uh, is uh, you know, the phonic sound of it is uh, similar to the hippo, right? H-Y-P-O, H-Y-P-O. Yeah. So, hippopotamus is how? Swelled up, isn't it? So, in hypotonic solution, cells will become like a hippopotamus, swelled up cells. And the opposite is hypertonic, right? Imbibition and plasmolysis. Fantastic. Now, let's move on towards the Active transport. We are done with passive. Let's do the active transport. Active transport is what? Active transport is an energy driven transport. It requires energy to move things inside to out, outside to in. And this is done when we have to move the molecules from lower concentration to higher concentration. That means against the concentration gradient from lower to higher and if you have to push it from lower to higher we will need energy right and that's why this process requires energy so how is uh, active transport important to us when in the cells when we uh, transport ions especially right like the sodium ions and all that time we need the active transport all right now let's move on towards the bulk transport. Very interesting, guys. Okay, so here are the macromolecule movements. Okay, macromolecule movement. What are macromolecules? Polysaccharides, right, which cannot uh, pass through those small protein channels or through the plasma membrane because it may get damaged. In those cases, we use bulk transport. Now, bulk transport is of two types basically exocytosis and endocytosis. Now, cytosis is basically cell outside, right? So, endocytosis is pinching. So, exo outside the cell, endo inside the cell. Now, exocytosis, what happens? This Exocytosis is a process wherein vesicles are, uh, you know, formed from the plasma membrane and release the content outside the cell. So now here what would happen? This is the plasma membrane. Okay. This is the plasma membrane. You have formed vesicles over here. Okay. You have formed vesicles over here and this vesicles when they are, uh, you know, having the substances, they pinch and they come and get added to the plasma membrane and that's how the substances will move out. So that is exocytosis, all right? Then we have endocytosis. In case of endocytosis, what would happen? So these are the mac macromolecules which are coming from outside and you need to transport it. Uh, your cells need to transport it inside the cell. What would happen? You know, this is the plasma membrane. This is the plasma membrane. It will simply pinch out like this. Okay, it will simply pinch out like this and these molecules would be fitted over here. Then it will pinch in, make a vesicle and that's how it is taken inside the cell. That's how it is taken inside the cell, right? So endocytosis substances are brought into the cell. Now endocytosis uh, further can be of two types, pinocytosis and phagocytosis. Phago, right? phagocytosis and 
pinocytosis. What's the difference? Both of them are endocytosis. A small difference, guys. Phago is for bigger molecules like a bacterial cells, uh, which is shown by your WBCs, right? The phagocytotic effect. Phagocyte meaning eating up, right? So it literally eats up the substances. So here a big bacterial cell is there, right? You have made a vesicle over here. And the same thing is also seen in amoeba when it do its uh, nutrition, you know, during food it is eating. So it makes a pseudopodium and then covers it up and then engulfs it inside, right? So large part particles like cells, microscopic uh, uh, molecules and microorganisms. On the other hand, pinocytosis is for the fluid material. If you have to take a fluid material which is in bulk amount, then it is pinocytosis. Simple. Right? So that's all for today. Now, uh, you will get a neat question based on this on the channel. Please answer that and see that's the challenge for today. If you can answer, well done. Please like, share and subscribe the video, more such videos on your way to make your foundation strong. Tata, take care and keep learning.